Hear these words from the 64th chapter of the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. The Lord has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to build up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoner, prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display the Lord's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities and the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations and in their riches you shall glory. Because their shame was double and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot. Therefore they shall possess a double portion Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For God has clothed me with the garments of salvation and has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On January 1st, 1883, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation declaring that all persons held as slaves within the rebellious states are and henceforth shall be free. Now, according to the National Archives, the Emancipation Proclamation was limited in many ways. It applied only to states that had seceded from the United States, leaving slavery untouched in the loyal border states. It also expressly exempted parts of the Confederacy that had already come under Northern control. The Confederate state of Texas was one of the Southern states that succeeded from the United States and fought hard to maintain slavery. Yet despite the declaration of freedom for the enslaved people of African descent on January 1st, 1883, it wasn't until two and a half years later on June 19th, 1885, when federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas and took control of the state, that the still enslaved people of African descent were set free. Exactly one year later, those same people celebrated their first Juneteenth, short for June 19th, commemorating their freedom from enslavement. In his letter to or letter from the Birmingham jail, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King stated that justice too long denied is justice delayed. And to coin another equally important reality, I share with you today that freedom did not delayed is also freedom denied. In today's passage, God's prophet was sent to proclaim to God's people who had returned from captivity in, from captivity in Babylon 
Babylon that after years of servitude, the city of Judah still lay in ruins and the people of God were worn down. They were living, they had lived under foreign rule. They had been treated as less than human, made to toil and separated from their home, their temple and all that they held dear. And the word of the Lord came while they were still in captivity to comfort them and to assure them that God was going to do a new thing. But now that the people had returned to their beloved land, they had been commissioned to rebuild the temple in their homes, and they were ensured that God's covenant would be reestablished to everyone who obeyed God. And yet, after the Israelites returned to Judah, some of God's people were still oppressed, they were still brokenhearted, they were still living in captivity, they were still imprisoned. The prophet's message was a word of hope. He said, God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland of ashes a garland of, pra a garland of praise instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display God's glory. This divine message proclaims that the present negative circumstances would be reversed. I imagine that the enslaved people of Texas thought that when the Calvary showed up in 1885, it meant that they were now free. Their circumstances would change. They would no longer be bound, no longer made to toil in fields and the homes of their enslavers without pay, inadequate nutrition, rags and cast offs for clothing, no longer separated from their families, their traditions or their culture, whipped or worse for standing up for themselves. The enslaved probably thought that they were now free to pursue their dreams and aspirations, to provide for their families, free to thrive in this new world in which they had merely survived for generations. Yet today, people of color in this country are still some of the lowest paid, still undereducated, still live in poverty and insufficiency and in violent communities and are still victimized by systems of oppression and injustice, all while being told to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. I contend that no one has ever pulled themselves up by their own bootstraps. Many who have succeeded in this country did so while standing on the backs of bootless people of African descent. Their inventions, their creativity, their bodies, blood, sweat, and tears. I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that today is Juneteenth and it is Father's Day. Michael D. Hannon, an associate professor of counseling at Montclair State University in New Jersey, considers the two falling on the same day as an awesome coincidence. He's quoted in the New York Times as stating, we can celebrate black fathers who are doing their best to protect, provide, and prepare their families for success while also acknowledging the spirit and resilience and the pursuit of freedom among black people in this country. In his book, Black Fathering and Mental Health, Dr. Hannon offers a series of essays with unique perspectives on the needs, challenges, and victories of black fathering in an anti-black world. The Israelites were existing in a physical, mental, and spiritual space that we might also term as anti. The space in which the people of God were existing was antithetical to all that God intended for God's people. And such is the case for far too many of God's people today. 
Too many of God's people are oppressed by the capitalistic country in which we live, oppressed by the astronomical inflation and cost of living, oppressed by America's history of killing, enslaving, and denying the very personhood of people of color, oppressed by the lack of affordable and just housing, desperate health care, and limited access to quality food oppressed by an unequal and unequitable justice system. The list of conditions and realities that oppress is exhaustive and exhausting. Although the circumstances of the Israelites and the circumstances of today are daunting, God's divine messenger delivers good news to the oppressed, declares healing to the, to the brokenhearted, pronounces liberty for, capti for the captives and release for the imprisoned. The divine messenger's commission is to proclaim liberty in the deuterocanonical codes observance of the year of Jubilee that occurs every 50 years when property and people held in captivity are to be set free. However, this pronouncement in Isaiah is not a declaration that people must wait another 50 years for freedom. This declaration of liberty is for right now in the righteous name of Jesus. Then and today, the liberation and freedom of people and communities that have been held in economic and social bondage is more than a promise to release, set free, and rebuild. It requires that the people of Jerusalem adopt a God-like love of justice and a hatred of robbery and wrongdoing. And it requires the same of us right now. The promise of liberty and justice requires that those of us who have influence, affluence, and power willingly and graciously give up our influence, affluence, and power. The promise of liberty and justice requires that people held in societal bondage define their own destiny, their own dreams, define their own standards of success and freedom. And our responsibility is to encourage, to pray, to walk with and for them. Our responsibility is to hold up their arms when they get weary, to wipe their tears and the sweat of their brow. And our responsibility is to work and toil alongside them and to prepare reparative resources. The promise of liberty and justice requires that we institute a year of jubilee right now in the righteous name of Jesus, who was and is the fulfillment of God's promise of liberty and justice. And this was made known when Jesus stood up in the temple and proclaimed, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. The Lord has sent me to proclaim re release to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. People of God, this is the year of the Lord's favor. This is the time of the Lord's favor. This is the day of the Lord's favor. This is the moment of the Lord's favor. So it is upon us, contingent upon us, to go out and build up ancient ruins. To go up and rise up former devastations to go up and go out and repair ruined cities and ruined lives and ruined peoples and ruined communities and to restore justice and peace in the streets of Pittsburgh, in the streets of the United States, in the streets wherever injustice occurs for all of God's people. Freedom can no longer be delayed. Did you hear me? Freedom can no longer be delayed because no freedom, no justice, 
no peace. But when we know freedom, we know justice, and we know peace. All of us, all of us together. May it be so. Amen.